Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a life cycle assessment. You should then be able to discuss the life cycle assessments for a plastic shopping bag and a paper shopping bag. And finally you should be able to describe the problems with life cycle assessments. Now every product has an impact on the environment. I'm showing you a selection of products here. A life cycle assessment attempts to put a number on the environmental impact of a product. We need to look at four main stages when carrying out a life cycle assessment. Firstly, we need to assess the environmental impact of extracting and processing the raw materials. Now, many modern products contain plastics and metals such as copper. Polymers such as plastics are produced using crude oil. First, the oil has to be extracted from the ground and then transported to oil refineries. The hydrocarbons have to be separated and then cracked. And finally, the polymer has to be produced. All of these processes take a large amount of energy, and a lot of that energy will be generated by burning fossil fuels. As we saw before, this leads to climate change. Extracting metals also takes a huge amount of energy. First, the ore has to be dug out of the mine and then transported for processing. The metal then has to be extracted from the ore, and this can produce large amounts of toxic waste products. Once we've produced our raw materials, we can then manufacture our product, package it, and transport it. And again, all of these stages will require energy, and they may release harmful waste products. We now need to assess the environmental impact of the product during its lifetime. For example, in the case of a toy, this could involve a large number of batteries. Producing batteries releases a large amount of toxic waste. And finally, we need to assess the disposal of the product at the end of its useful life. Many modern products contain a number of harmful chemicals. These chemicals have to be disposed of carefully, and again, this may require a lot of energy. It also takes energy to transport used products for disposal, for example, to a landfill or a recycling centre. Now, in your exam, you could be asked to carry out a simple life cycle assessment for shopping bags made from plastic or from paper. So we're going to look at that now. Plastic bags are produced using chemicals from crude oil, whereas paper bags are made from wood from trees. Now, crude oil is a non-renewable resource. However, trees are renewable. We can simply plant more. Extracting crude oil can be harmful to habitat. For example, if there's an oil leak. Felling trees for wood is also extremely destructive to habitats, such as forests. Both crude oil and wood need to be chemically processed. In both cases, this requires a large amount of energy, and it releases waste products. Making paper also requires huge amounts of water. Now, plastic shopping bags are strong, and they're often reused, for example as bin liners. However, paper shopping bags are not as strong, and they tend to tear. They're often used only once before being thrown away. At the end of their lives, both plastic bags and paper bags have to be transported, either for recycling or to landfills. Paper bags are often heavier than plastic bags, so they can take more energy to transport. Now, there is one very big problem with plastic bags. Plastic is non-biodegradable. In other words, it's not broken down by microorganisms. However, paper breaks down quickly, especially when wet. Because they're non-biodegradable, plastic bags remain in the environment for a very long time. This means that plastic bags are a major form of litter, and they also fill up landfills. So as you can see, there's no simple answer as to whether plastic or paper shopping bags have a bigger environmental impact. And that brings us to the issues with life cycle assessments. Now, we can measure the use of water and energy. We can also measure the production of some waste products. The problem is that we cannot always be certain how damaging these are to the environment. This means that in some cases we've got to make estimates or value judgments, and these may not always be accurate. The other problem is that life cycle assessments can be biased, for example, to support claims by advertisers. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on life cycle assessments in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.